Dear students, welcome to Statics and Dynamics and thank you for tuning in to this video. This is the first video of a series of videos for the course that I'm teaching named Statics and Dynamics. This is an introductory course for engineering students. Statics and Dynamics is one of the most important courses in engineering undergraduate education. Learning about Statics and Dynamics, it comes to your mind mechanics. So what is mechanics and why do we study mechanics? And what are the different branches of mechanics and why there are actually different branches of mechanics. And finally, what, what units of measurements to use? All of these topics are general principles we're going to be covering in a, you know, a couple of videos as an introdu introduction to the course of statics and dynamics. I am Dr. Loi al Zobi and I'm an associate professor of biomedical engineering at the University of Mount Union. The content of these videos is educational and I hope that is going to provide you with a, a very good understanding about the statics and dynamics uh, principles that we use in engineering. Let's dig in with the first thing we will discuss which is what, what is mechanics? Mechanics is defined as the study of what happened to things, quote unquote, bodies, when a force is applied um, to those bodies. It's very important to understand that both the body and the force applied to it can be large or small. So let's dissect this a little bit more. If we have a body and it's affected by a force, so we have a contact point of the force on that body. And in this example, in the pictures that you see on the picture to the right, you can see that there's a contact point on the train wheel, and that point is very small compared to the enormous, a gigantic body of the train. However, the force, which is actually, you know, the reaction force from the ground based on the weight of the train is acting on a very small point. And that's what I meant by, you know, the body is small, but the force could be large and vice versa. In order to be able to analyze our uh, systems, um, like such a train wheel on the track. So we need to do something first called idealization. And idealization is that we are one model, that they're models to simplify the application of a theory. And we're going to use a couple of idealize, you know, a couple of kinds of idealizations in this course. And let's put, put it in this context. Idealizations are assumptions to simplify uh, the problem that we are trying to um, analyze. So what kind of idealization are we going to use? First, Particles. So particles are objects that has a mass uh, for a size that is very negligible. And we also, we have another assumption, which is a rigid body, uh, which means that we have bodies that the shape does not change when load is applied. And the last assumption or idealization we're going to use through this course is that we have something called concentrated forces. And the arrow, if you go back to the, our example of the train, and uh, the arrow that is um, pointing to, uh, to on the right image uh, up to the wheel, we are said that the, we have a force that's concentrated, uh, which means that it represents uh, the effect of loading, uh, which assumed to act on a point of the body, provided the area over which the load is applied is very small compared to the size, you know, of in this example of the train. This will give you an idea about what mechanics is. So let's keep in mind that it's bodies, forces, and what is going to happen to the bodies because of the acted forces on it. And we need to analyze that. So you need to analyze to understand the forces and what, how bodies react to different kinds of forces. So that's how we're going to start studying uh, mechanics. Now let's move on to talk about the branches of mechanics. So this is the general understand, the general definition. So what kind of branches do we have in mechanics? We have three main branches. First one called rigid body mechanics. The second is deformable body mechanics, you know, the mechanics of deformable bodies, and we have fluid mechanics. We are going to focus our attention and our effort and work in this course, which is statics and dynamics on the rigid body uh, mechanics. And that you can see that it is um, divided into two branches to the left of your screen, which is statics and dynamics. Two thirds of the class will be statics and one third will be dynamics. That's how we're going to uh, design our course. Keep in mind that rigid body does not, the shape of rigid body does not change when a load is applied and that simplifies a lot of the calculations and the concepts that we are using. 
This is different from deformable bodies and fluids, which are the topics of other courses. So we learned about what mechanics is, we learned about the branches of mechanics. What units of measurement should we use in, in analyzing and studying mechanics and the mechanic, mechanical systems? So we have four fundamental physical quantities and remember this. Each time we want, to look, we want to quantify something and measure something, we go back to or refer to the basic sciences, in particular physics and chemistry. Here is physics. We have four quantities that we are going to continue to use throughout the course and in multiple problems. So you have length, mass, time, and force. We need to be able to quantify those and use them. A quick definition, length is used to locate the position of a point in space and their by describe the size of, of any physical system. You can, you know, simplify it by saying, well, it's distance and geometry properties of a body. Mass, uh, on the other hand, is the measure of a quantity of a matter. So we compare between two bodies, each, between each other with how much quantity they have uh, in them. Third one is time, and it's, the con it's conceived as the con succession of events. And we know we can measure this in seconds, and minutes, and hours. And the last one is force, which is actually very important in our class. So it's the push or pull extended by one body on another. If you think about forces, I hope that you remember Isaac Newton and his laws. So Newton's have described three laws. So Newton's law one, two, and three. And I hope that you remember them from physics. We are going to focus on the sec Newton's second law, uh, which relates force to mass and acceleration. So force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about the three laws quickly and describe them. I will give you a minute to think about, can you recall these three uh, laws? Let me help. So first, the first, Newton's first law states a, part it, a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line uh, with constant velocity tends to remain in this state provided the particle is not subjected to any unbalanced forces. Well, summation of all forces equal to zero, so we have a balanced system. Newton's second law states that a particle acted upon by an unbalanced force, F, and that's what we have in our slide, uh, uh, experiences an acceleration A that has the same direction as the force and a magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. That's mass times acceleration, right? The third law states the mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. So those are the th Newton's three laws. I'm sure that you remember them. Now, uh, we have, in order to be able to do measurements, and to solve problems, we need units for these quantities, for length, mass, time, and force. And units are arbitrary names we, gave, we give to physical quantities. We will continue the next video talking about what kind of units uh, are available and which one are we going to be using. Thank you for watching the video and Till next time, bye.